And that is what the fourth mass cinder is for. <laughs> Let's uh, sort these brakes out. Right, first job for these calipers is snap, get the line off because we've got a with a dry brake fit in here. Nice bit of kit that um, Stalbly is a yeah. It's a dry brake. Does what it says on the tin, doesn't it? You just unclip it. It's dry. There's no fluids sitting out, so it keeps it sealed, which is nice when you take them off for servicing them as regular as we do. So as it's sealed, we need to crack that off. So. so I don't get fluid everywhere. Now next up, we'll take the fitting out so we can... So next job we need to get all of these pistons out, all six of them, because well, the main job here is we're going to replace the seals on the pistons. So if we pop all six out, we'll do that. But I'll show you what we've got here, how we do that. Here's a tool I've made, it's only quick when it still needs some fine lines. It's an old, old carbon brake disc. Just got the angle grind to it, cut it, glue some bits of carbon on here to get the right thickness. So put that in the middle there. And then we push push it out, come to the end, but don't pop out so they're all equally out. I mean, the tool's not the best, but it's better than no tool. So let's see how that goes now. Right, so now if it's clean and dry, we give it an inspection, make sure there's no damage on the surface of the pistons. If, it's, if there's any marks or scores, then it's gonna damage the new seals. So we'll check all of them. And then on the caliper, just check for any wear inside the bores. Um, make sure it's all good in there. Check these little tabs here. Sometimes they break, which hold the, dis which hold the um, pads in the right place. And uh, just check for any other wear or cracks or anything. But these, these Brembo brakes are, calipers are pretty decent, pretty good. So here we are now ready for the rebuild. Got the caliper, all the pistons, new seals, and they are in the seal conditioning fluid. So you've got to condition the seals. So I've left them for 24 hours, just over 24 hours now, soaking in the fluid. So they are now ready to go and slip in the caliper. So as I've had all the all of these together mixed up together, they are colour coded. So the medium sized ones are got a white dash on them. The small ones are white and yellow, and the big ones are blue and red. So now I've got them organised into their three different sizes. And stick them in the caliper. There we have it, on Rebook Caliper. Three more to do. So the peaceful, quiet workshop afternoon by myself, disrupted by Cookie, decided to come in and work on his own wagon, wagon to fail its MRT for the fifth time in a row, probably. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So now we've got the calipers rebuilt. We're gonna install them, but first we need to get the backing plates on. Here are the backing plates. Yeah, so we'll... Slip this bad boy on here. Oh, fucking first time that time. Struggled a bit earlier, but I don't know about that. VXT, freshly painted, looking suave. So we'll bolt them on now. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine bolts to bolt that on. Too many. Yeah, <laughs> nine, eight too many. No. Right, now I've got that on. We bolt it on. We use some not come loose juice. Dab a bit of that on the bolts, and then we're all good to go. All dandy. All gravy. That's the rear one on. Time to bang on the front one.
So we come over here to cook, eh? Done, mate. Fixed it? Yeah, fixed the bajuba out of it. Yeah, well, if we look in the back here, he's got a load of amps. My only question for you, Cookie, is what happens if you get a flat tire? Got stuff in there, and then Him. under this, it's my spare tire. You actually have a spare tire in there? We weren't expecting that, were you? Uh, Next job is to put the discs on these discs are located with a little snap ring in the middle of there. And on the, I think you've got a bow, and another one there, which line up with these ones here. So we get it lined up and then. And then next up, we've got the brake caliper itself. Because obviously there's no usual on some cars we work on. There's the bolt saw in here with a bracket. You can take that out and slide the pads in behind for quick changes. But because these uh, carbon discs and pads can last a whole 24 hours, you don't need to have the quick change on them, so they don't. So solid bit in the back there for the extra strength. So we will put these pads in. Now the pads in, we'll slip them on. Three more to do. And that's all four calipers now on. Just need to connect up the lines, cable tie them up, and obviously tighten the top up the nuts. So that'll be next. So now they're all done, we grab the brake line, feed it through the route it goes. Beautiful. Now we'll just cable tie them up. We're good. So that's it now, all the brakes fitted and on. So I just need to bleed the brakes up next, that's the next job, but on my own, can't do that because I need someone on the rear caliper as well, so I'll do the front and the pedal and the fluid. So we'll have to do that another day. Um, yeah, so we're getting there with the car. Also, a few um, videos ago, I mentioned about the fourth master cylinder that sits just down there. You can briefly see it, I'll show you a picture now of, of it with the seat out, the cockpit's all in. That is, a few people guessed it right, there's lots of guesses, lots of random guesses, lots of good guesses, but there was only two or three people that actually guessed it correctly. Uh, the master cylinder in there is to do with the Marshall safety system. So if we look outside of the car here, you've got the extinguisher pull button, which is not the uh, pull switch there, and then you've got the master switch button there, which kills all the power. So in the event of a, of a crash, the marshals can come up and they can, they, the driver's 
already got out of the car and left or the driver's unconscious, they can pull the extinguisher from here and then they can kill the power. And also in killing the power, it throws the car into neutral. And that is what the fourth mass cylinder is for. Um, it throws it into neutral, so if the car's the driver's out, if the car's stops at the side of the track and it's in first gear, to try and get it into neutral, you'll have to press the clutch down or the, the marshals aren't gonna know the procedure with a gearbox button on the dash. They won't know how to do that. So they have that button there, which just throws it into neutral and the drive, marshals can then push the car out the way of the circuit. How the system works, you've got the compressor here. That compressor is for two reasons, for the uh, neutral switch and also for the gear shift on the um, gearbox there. So that compresses the air and it goes into a tank that's just behind the bulkhead here. And then from the air tank up here, the air then stored in the tank, then there's a cylinder on the, an air cylinder on the um, end of the master cylinder with the push rod rather than attached to pedal. And then that compressed air fires the, the piston inside the master cylinder, which then pushes fluid down to the back there to the slave cylinder. It's in theory exactly the same as the driver pushing down the pedal, but it's air operated from the extra mass cylinder there. In fact, let me plug the compressor in. I can do a little demonstration for you. So that's the compressor. Very really noisy. Right, so now the compressor stops. If we go on to here, we can go gearbox. That's on B2. So we press the manual gearbox and we can shift it. Now that's shifted it into first gear now. So as you can see, it's in gear there. We can turn the manual gearbox off now. So there we are in first gear. As we tested there, it's in there. Now if we hit the button. Perfect, it's on. It's killed the power. So you can see the power is now from the dash. Just heard the cylinder go and now Spins nice and free, look, clutches down in neutral. So beautiful. That's that's that is the that's the fourth mass cylinder of the car then. And if we press the button again, you'll hear it. You get your head release. <coughs> head release and there's a compressor just building the pressure back up. So that's how that works. I'm sure there's lots of other systems on the car that you might not know, and I can show you if you want to. Just leave a comment down below on anything. And uh, I'm sure in a future video I can show you. Make sure you comment and subscribe. Give us a like and I'll keep making these videos and bringing you along on the uh, rest of the race weekends we do. So see you in the next one.